entirely new Aston Martin Vantage. Now, would you believe it? This is the standard exhaust system. <laughs> there is in fact an optional sports exhaust system which not only looks better because it's the quad tip exhaust setup, <laughs> but would you believe it? Sounds even better. So what are we in? Well, let me get the sort of uh, facts out of the way first because I like to share with you the things that you can't Google because of course, what value would that be? The big news really is that uh, this car is now making full use of the relationship with AMG. It has a phenomenal four liter, very familiar four liter V8 twin turbocharged AMG engine in it. I say it's familiar because it can be found in the likes of the Mercedes AMG GT. But the important thing about this car is the characteristics of it have been tuned to be very Aston Martin. Now, while this engine is very familiar from the AMG side of things, I think that's a fantastic thing. When that relationship was first announced, uh, there was a little bit of controversy because people were like, oh, you know, it's not a, a pure Aston Martin. Let me tell you something. The guys have put a lot of effort into the way this thing sounds and feels, uh, and in my opinion, have fettled it into what is ultimately the best parts of Aston Martin mated with the best parts of AMG, which is the power plant. This engine is just thick with torque. It's this lovely swell of, oh, dare I say it, tangible force behind your right foot is just a sense of occasion. So the sound is a lot more akin to the Aston Martin side of things. And I think that is a testament to just how much work and engineering has gone into this car. And it's pushing out over 500 horsepower and over 500 pounds-feet of torque, which makes this thing phenomenal and effortless to drive. So what else is Googleable so I can get that out of the way? The ZF gearbox. This is more of a conventional eight-speed gearbox as opposed to a twin clutch system. You'll know if you follow this channel regularly. I do favor a twin clutch. However, driving this thing, you would be forgiven for thinking it was a twin clutch because the response of it is sensational. Now, you've got multiple driving modes uh, which are calibrated and toggled on the steering wheel. And what's great is you can independently control the suspension and damper settings from the drivetrain and throttle response settings. So you've got Sport, Sport Plus, and Track Mode, which is on the right-hand side of the steering wheel here. For the road, I love putting it into Track Mode, which I know might sound a little bit overkill for the road, but that mode for me adapts the throttle mapping and the exhaust sound just to a level where all of a sudden you're reminded that you're in something pretty spicy and as a result <laughs> it's wonderful listen to that just listen to it wonderful theater but i've got to tell you the sports exhaust, if you really want the full force of that engine coming through into your ear holes, you're going to want to spec the sports exhaust. Not only does it look a lot better, because uh, let's face it, that single exit exhaust, while it seems to be chirping out a good tone now, aesthetically, it kind of looks like a pea shooter. I don't know what they were thinking, unless they were thinking, you know what, let's design the standard exhaust system so it looks a little bit weak, so that we encourage people to spec the optional upgrade, which is the sports system. It's a kind of a no-brainer, like aesthetically and audibly, it's just leagues ahead. However, if you are spec standard system and you want a bit more of a sort of a GT feel and a Grand Tour vibe from your Vantage, don't get me wrong, this, this system is still just bellows wonderful tones. So but what's it like to drive? Where do we start? I've never been a big fan of the original Vantage. When it reached the end of its production line, it really started to get pretty well sorted, particularly in the GT8. This, you can tell, has just been totally rethought. 50-50 weight distribution, 
brakes on the road are excellent. As I mentioned, this doesn't have the optional carbon ceramics, but this for me is a lot more of a road car than it is a track car. And on the road, the standard steel rotors, plenty of feel. We've been threading it down some fairly swift, potent roads earlier with very little fade, and it was always there for you. And I just think, the thing with Aston Martin is the things that you almost can't see. And what I mean by that is, it's the way it makes you feel upon stepping inside it. The smell of the interior. I felt like I was in an Hermes showroom. There's just this wonderful tone of leather and quality materials that hits the nostrils upon opening the door. It's the door that holds itself. I think it's called the infinite hold door. Basically, when you get out of this car, it doesn't matter at what degree or angle you open the car door. It just holds it there. That's actually a signature Aston Martin feature. Sounds trivial, but you know, when you're in a car park or something and you're opening your door in a fairly tight space, you don't have to sort of sit there and hold it open while you're trying to step out. It just holds itself. And it's features like that that I think overlap beautifully with how sporty this car is. It still has a massive smattering of luxury as well. Now speaking of luxury, very few brands do interiors as well as Aston Martin and this new generation of car, it feels like it was sculpted by water. Now hear me out, okay? So most designers, when they talk about the exteriors of their car, there's a lot of emphasis on it being sculpted by air because of the way it's spent in the wind tunnel and aerodynamics and the way that the air flows over the car. Now, of course, water has absolutely nothing to do with the way the interior of this car was sculpted, but if one of the designers said to me that it was inspired by the flow of water, I would nod in agreement immediately because it is so sculpted. It feels like uh, the water has cascaded through a clay model and eroded it with fluidity and they've gone, you know what? That looks amazing. Let's take a symmetrical version of that and whack it on the interior. It's a stunning place to be. There's so much flowing movement, rounded, soft edges. And everywhere you look, you can spend so long in this car looking at every crack and orifice and discovering something new because there's so much depth to it and I think for me stepping into the Vantage is as impressive as looking at it from the outside. Now in typical internet fashion the online community has been kind of split a bit on this car which I've been surprised at. Now if you followed my journey with the Vantage you may or may not know that I was very lucky to be involved in this car from the very start. Well, what I mean by that is, when Aston Martin launched this car, and it was its global unveiling uh, late in 2017, they very kindly asked me to present the live launch of it to their live audience and their Facebook live show. But of course, I've sort of seen this car a lot in reality, in person. I've stood in front of it and admired its shapes and curves. And I think when you can sit in front of a car and move and see the contours move with it, it makes a lot more sense. Then. <laughs> forget the styling for a second. <laughs> but don't forget, this is their first shot. This is the very first edition of the all new Vantage. And why that's a significant thing to talk about is because the last Vantage was in production for 12 years. 12 years! That's a long time for a production car. Now, the world has moved on a lot since then. Aston Martin have a lot more competition, but also the automotive world is churning out cars much faster than they ever were. And as a result, this is Aston's first foray into the new world of super sports cars. And I've got to tell you, if this is what they're doing from day one, I cannot wait to see how this platform evolves in future. So not only have they used AMG's engine architecture, they've also gone and used their electronic architecture too, which means the infotainment and sat-nav and things like that are all much much crisper and they just work a lot better than they used to in older cars. You can see how much torque this thing's got. <laughs> it's spooling up all over the shop. I love it. This thing just eats tarmac. This, of course, is coming from a brand that, since they discontinued the old Vantage, 
they have introduced the Vulcan to the world, which is a track-only, absolutely unhinged hooligan of a naturally aspirated V12 hypercar. And then they went and announced the Valkyrie, which has taken all levels of crazy to an entirely different stratosphere. We haven't actually heard that thing start up yet or seen it roll, but I am told by around about September time we might see the first rolling mule of that car. Both of those cars are absolutely pure examples of what I believe other brands should be doing in creating these halos of relentless cool that filter down epicness. And I think that is what Aston Martin have done with both of those cars. They've got these two flagship cars, the Vulcan and the Valkyrie. They're so halo, like they're so far removed from these cars, you can't even fathom it. But the point of it is, it's a nod to where Aston believe they can sit in the market. It's them flexing their muscles and going, yeah, we build road cars, but check out what we do when we've got our projects at the weekend. And that for me has added so much cool incredibility to this brand. And now you can own a slice of that same company. And they're making no bones about teaming up with the likes of AMG and you know partners that excel in other areas mating together this timeless design, this fabulous quality, and putting it together in a package which all of a sudden ticks so many boxes it's hard to ignore. But please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this car. And of course, I shall be getting one. I mean, it's unbelievable if you've only just joined the review of this car and are new to the channel. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, I shall be the lucky recipient of a brand new Aston Martin Vantage. But the point is, we're going to be living with one from a very early stage and it's your opportunity to ask me questions, what you would like to see, how you would like me to use this car, what you would like me to do with it, to give you guys the most valuable information I possibly can as to what it's like living with a new Aston Martin Vantage. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and we, sh we shall be back with lots more content and of course with a new Vantage soon. Ciao!